Hey everybody, we have a birth announcement for you for these mini Australian Labradoodle puppies. And look at Noisette, who is our mama here, all snugged up with little red collar puppy. So sweet, she is just the best mom. These mini Australian Labradoodle puppies are not quite 24 hours old and they are doing fabulously. So in today's video, we are going to introduce you to each of the puppies, let you know their sex, their birth weight, and also tell you a little bit about their color and their pattern. We're going to tell you a bit about the delivery process and give you an update on Mama Noisette. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nile Labradoodles, and these are the mini Australian Labradoodle puppies from our Paws on Your Heart litter. <clears throat> One of the reasons we named the litter Paws on Your Heart is because Noisette has the biggest heart. She is just the sweetest, most giving girl in the world. She is always gentle, always kind. And I think that is so well exemplified as you just look at little red collar girl all snuggled up right close next to her mama. It's just a beautiful thing to see. So th this delivery was beautiful. Noisette was just so kind to us. She decided that she would have her puppies during the day and that she would also oblige and have them between lunch and dinner. So nobody was inconvenienced whatsoever. <clears throat> Most of our deliveries are done at night or very early in the morning, so Noisette was a lovely, pleasant treat for us to have it in the day. It's always a little easier to see in daylight what's going on as well, even though we have lots of lights, of course. So this little girl, um, yesterday, she started telling us that she was getting ready to have her puppies by refusing to eat. She hadn't eaten her dinner the night before, so we were like, hmm, something's starting to happen. We were pretty sure. And then Noisette sleeps on the bed with us when she's here. She is one of the very few dogs that Ripple does allow up onto the bed with us. And she likes to sleep right close to both of us. So she's in the middle. And during the night, she was up and down and up and down, not off the bed, but up and down the length of the bed. She even came over and gave Reynolds a great big kiss on his nose in the middle of the night. And she was digging at the covers. <clears throat> She was digging, trying to make a nest in our bed. So we were both awake, you know, off and on throughout the night, wondering if things were imminently about to happen because we really didn't want to have the puppies born in our bed. Thank you very much. But we could tell she was still relaxed. She wasn't panting. She was just doing some nesting. So then the next morning when she didn't eat breakfast, that was no surprise. And then she went into, uh, well, she wanted to go back into our bed, uh, but I convinced her that her own bed was a better selection and she just stayed in bed. She didn't get up the whole day. She, all morning. She was just there lying in bed, very comfortable, very relaxed, uh, just letting us know things were about to happen. And as is typical of a girl about to deliver, she did not want to be away from the two of us. She wanted to make sure that both of us were close by to her at all times. And then when she walked, she had a little bit of hunch in her back, which is a sign that the puppies are moving and it's uncomfortable. So then uh, we knew things were really going to get underway right around 1 p.m. That was when we saw the first signs that she was having contractions. And so we had everything already prepared in our bedroom. We had only just had puppies the day previous. Uh, so everything had been put away and we just took it all back out again. It was very quick and easy to do. Uh, we quickly sterilized all of our tools from the previous delivery and uh, we already had gotten the laundry underway and so had lots of things ready to go. So we quickly transformed the bedroom into our whelping room, told the other dogs they were gonna have to stay in the house and fend for themselves for a little bit and we brought Noisette into the bedroom. And she was just great. Just so relaxed, so good about everything. The only thing that Noisette does that's odd is when she delivers, delivers her puppies, she doesn't like to be lying down as most girls are. Most girls are in this position that Noisette is in right now when they deliver. Uh, their heads are lifted up. 
uh, but they they lay down on their side like this not noisette nope she is up and she does a bit of a squat which if i remember from my days when my son was born which is uh, 45 years ago now that was something that was really in vogue and something that all the natural birth coaches wanted you to do was squat to deliver your baby because of course it makes sense from a gravity point of view the only thing is when you are doing puppies and you have other puppies that you want to be looking at you want to make sure you got the baby and the baby isn't going plunk onto the floor i don't think that is a very nice welcome into the world so but other than that <clears throat> noisette is really easy to have puppies with. So now let's tell you a little bit about each of the puppies and introduce them to you. Um, if Noisette is not comfortable with me picking them right up, then we will do them down lower. Uh, sometimes girls don't like their babies to be picked up when they're this young. Other times they're totally trusting and are fine with it. So the first born in this litter was Blue Collar Boy. And he is right here and he's nursing. So we're just going to see if I can slowly ease him off the nipple there. We always want to be very gentle and purposeful in how we handle the puppies. So Mr. Blue Collar Boy, <clears throat> Noisette is a sable. Normally when sables are born, we see a dark line running down their back. That's our first clue that they're sables, even if they happen to look like phantoms. So you can see there's no line down this guy's back. Not one that's obvious anyways. Whoops, let's just get your foot under there, bud. But then when I look at his face, his markings on the side of his face are not particularly distinctive, and he doesn't have anything that I can see above his eyebrows at this point in time. He does have the markings on his feet, up his legs, and then he also has the tampoint under his tail, all signs of phantom. But whether this boy is a phantom or a sable, I'm not entirely sure at the moment. I'm just also going to loosen his collar off a bit there. Uh, these are little elastics used for masks, so they're very easy to adjust and they're very tiny so they don't uh, aren't uncomfortable to the puppies so we'll have to wait and see whether this guy's a phantom or whether this guy is um, a sable if you look at his claws right here on my finger these are really cool cool you see the little white tips at the end and then the rest of them are black it looks really neat when they're when he's this little and they're like that what you got on your face there noise that's just going to do a little check make sure everything's safe and sound give him a little kiss so mr blue collar was born at 1 25 p.m and he was 213 grams a really nice beginning yeah way to go noisette next was silver collar and silver collar is somewhere in this pile of puppies I just have to find him. Where are you, Silver? Oh my goodness, hi. There you are. So, Silver is showing you his beautiful markings on his chest and under his chin. And you can see his belly button cord is just drying up there. And you can see when I say Noisette has nice, calm, relaxed puppies, this is what I mean. They're pretty cool with being upside down even at this young age. Now this little handsome fellow was uh, born at 140 and he weighed 236 grams. So that makes him the biggest puppy in the litter. And again, is he a sable or is he a chocolate? Well, only genetics no, because I don't again see that dark line down him. So there's nothing to tell me that uh, he probably is a sable. Uh, he does have some signs of being a phantom, but again, you'll see they're not strong on the side of the face or over the eyes. So my guess is he probably is a sable. That's what I'm going to go with for now, but we're just going to have to wait and see, aren't we? Yeah. And Mr. Silver Collar, as I said, weighed 236 grams and is the biggest puppy or was the biggest puppy in the litter when they were born. We'll just have to see what he does from here on in. There you go. I guess I'll give him back to you. Thank you very much. That's a good girl. Thanks for sharing. Such a good girl. Next was Purple Collar, and this was our first girl in the litter. Now, I have a reservation on this litter list for myself, so I was very excited when the girls started to arrive. And Purple Collar is very similar. And look at those, look at those white claws there. It makes her look like a grizzly bear. 
I'm a little bit more convinced she's a sable because I can see a trace of that dark line right here. So I don't think she's a phantom. Again, you see very weak markings here, nothing over the eyebrows, and lots of white claws there. I think we should call you Grizzly. I think we should call you Grizzly, yeah. So I'm pretty sure this is a chocolate sable puppy, which means she'll probably end up looking a lot like her mama Noisette, who is the most beautiful girl in the world, of course. And Perpy, she was born at 2.15 p.m. and she weighed 196 grams. And again, I can show you that already these puppies are just so nice and calm that they're not really overly upset if I put them upside down. We only do it for that very short period of time because we do not want them to be stressed at all. Next, we had Green Collar. And Green Collar is our only ebony puppy. And I, statistically, our litter should have been as many ebonies and blacks as chocolates, but nope. It actually should have been uh, mostly chocolates and blacks and then some caramels, but instead we only have one caramel and one black and everyone else is chocolate. Black is a dominant color in the dog world, so you would have anticipated that there'd be a good number of blacks, but no. We only got your one black boy, and look at his little tiny goatee. Isn't that adorable? A little bit like his papa. Yeah, otherwise, he doesn't have any white except for this little smooshy bit here on his chest. Very tiny. He is a, just a gleaming, gleaming boy. You can just see yourself in his coat. He's so shiny. And Mr. Green was born at 2.23 p.m., and he came in at 230 grams. So he is a very nice white. He is a, wait, rather, he's a nice chunky boy. There you go, my little sweetheart. Yeah, you give him a kiss, welcome him back. Good girl, yeah, good girl. And after green, we had red collar. Back to the females. So red collar is here nursing. And we'll just see if she'll be okay with me taking her out of the pile there. Come on, sweetheart. That's a girl. Oh, isn't it amazing how strong their suction is? And they're not even 24 hours old. And you can't get them <laughs> easily off of the nipple there. There we go. She finally released. That's my girl. Again, we have a chocolate. I think probably a phantom. Maybe a sable. Who knows? Time will tell. This little girl is also got sporting those nice white claws to show you. She has that adorable white goatee, thanks to Daddy, and a teeny tiny little bit of white. And you can see those tan points right across her chest there. Very striking markings. And Miss Red Collar Girl was born at 249, and she was a tie with her brother before her and weighed 230 grams, which is just a fabulous weight. Really, really strong weights. You can also see those tan points inside red collars uh, ear there there you go sweet girl and then last but not least was our little blondie here hey babes our little pink collar girl and she is sort of a tuxedo We'll call her a tuxedo, even though technically she's not precisely a tuxedo. But you can see she has the white on both sides of her faces, up her head, and then it has a break, and then it comes back down her head. Were she a real tuxedo, this white would come down, and then it would go all the ways around her neck. And you can see it's not completely around her neck. The white on her paws is just up on her paws. It's not halfway up her legs as a tuxedo properly would have. And then we got all this pretty white on the on the tummy. This looks like a little V for victory here. And mm, there's the white on the toes and the little white tip on the end of the tail. Oh, yes. This little lady was born at 301 and she was 190 grams. She was the tiniest. So she's the only blonde and she's a tiny one in the litter. Yes, she is. But she's just doing great. She's very good. She's often, uh, we find with our smallest puppies, they're very feisty. And this little girl is quite feisty. She's also an excellent problem solver. She's already figured out when everybody's at the milk bar and she's too tiny to find a, a spot, 
she is small enough that she can oh I'm sorry that's the one you want there sorry I was trying to show you a different one she can wriggle her way right underneath everyone and she can get one of the nipples that's on the other side and generally that means that they probably have more milk in them too so excellent problem solving skills for a little puppy who's not even 24 hours old so now what's coming up and what's going to happen next well, first of all, we'll update you on Mama Noisette. She's doing great, as you can see. She is totally calm. You can't have a more relaxed puppy than this. She's just like, yeah, it's good. It's okay. They're all taken care of. I've done my job. Now I'm going to catch up on my sleep because that was a lot of work to have six puppies. It's interesting because Noisette is about 18 pounds at the most. She has six puppies. And Orca, who's right next door to her, is closer to 30 pounds and also has six puppies. So it's a lot more work for a little girl to maintain six lives than it is for a larger girl like Orca, despite the fact that Orca's puppies are twice as big as Noisette's puppies are. It's just the mere, uh, the sheer number of it for a small little mini like she is. Her appetite's fantastic. Um, I actually got up at two o'clock in the morning to feed her because I realized I'd fed her right after the puppies were born at four. And then I didn't give her dinner at the regular time because that would have been too, too close. So she missed out on her late night uh, meal. And I realized that when I woke up at two in the morning. So I got up and I made her dinner and I came in and fed it to her. Noisette likes to be hand fed. She does not like to even sit up at this point to eat. She'll stay lying down, just lift her head up for me because uh, she doesn't want to disturb her babies. She's also being a little bit stubborn about going outside to go to the bathroom. She doesn't want to leave them. She's very concerned about them. Uh, she is a very doting mom. She is very dedicated to her babies. So we have to really encourage her to get outside. She'll go out and she'll pee in about one second and she just flies back to the door and she's like, away. Oh, I gotta go make sure they're all okay. They do set up a squawk when they're gone and that does also tend to set all those alarm bells off for her. But she's doing really beautifully. I have absolutely no concerns about her and her parenting abilities. What I really like is when you see a litter like this who's not even 24 hours old, uh, we've got two puppies who are nursing, everyone else is full and they're all quiet, they're all plump, they're all shiny. They're all, the, the fact they're quiet is what really tells the biggest story. It means their tummies are full, all their needs are being met. So right now their eyes are sealed shut, their ears are sealed shut, and they're not able to eliminate on their own. They are 100% dependent on Noisette caring for them. They also can't regulate their body temperature. So the room is 23 degrees, uh, so it's very warm. You can see they're together but they are not all piled on top of each other as they would be if they were cold and they're not spread all over the place as they would be were they too hot. And we don't have a heating pad and we don't keep it really hot as some breeders like to do because then that makes mom uncomfortable and she doesn't want to be near her puppies because of course having this many puppies around your tummy makes you very warm. So we want to have a really nice balance where the puppies are comfortably warm so they should always be warm to your touch. They're not wasting energy trying to because they're cold but we want mom to be comfy and to enjoy having her puppies near her. And you'll see Noisette isn't even panting. She's breathing rapidly, you can see that, as is appropriate for a girl who's both lactating and in a warm environment, but she's not panting. She's completely comfortable and at ease. So that's exactly what we want to see. So really proud of her. She's done a great job. Love this litter. They're really adorable. Uh, they're, they're just doing so well. Uh, so what's coming up next? Well, over the next week, the puppies have a huge responsibility. They have to eat, sleep, and repeat. That's all they do. They just eat and sleep. What we're looking for is a 10 to 15% weight gain each day, because uh, ideally when the puppies are a week old, they've doubled their birth weight. That's gold. If they don't do it until they're two weeks old, that's okay. But the gold standard is that they've doubled their birth weight by the time they're a week old. So please come back and join us next week and we'll see if the puppies have met that first milestone. 
We'll tell you other things that we've done with them. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of insight uh, about each puppy and how they are. Obviously their personalities are very immature right now, uh, but we can still see little signs. We'll be getting our early neurological stimulation tomorrow, which we'll tell you more about next week. And that is our program where I was alluding to. We just do things very quickly for a very short period of time where we do something that's unexpected for the puppy and we teach them that it's okay. Unexpected things are not things to be worried about. This helps to build a foundation to create a strong dog who has lots of confidence and is not afraid of the world, what we all aim for. So I hope you'll join us again next week. Uh, we hope as well, if you have a minute, you'll give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out a lot. And please, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just write them down below here. I'm always happy to talk to you about Labradoodles and anything that you might want to know about them. And we will see you here next week again when we have our week one update. We hope you'll join us then. Thanks so much for watching.